Okay, now let us consider alignment-based methods. So alignment-based methods, these are um, based on pairwise or multiple sequence alignment data as its name suggests. So basically, when you do alignment-based methods, we need first to have a multiple sequence alignment. So they can also be used with distance methods to express similarity between two sequences reflecting on the number of changes in its, each sequence. So what's the difference between alignment and distance-based? Basically, alignment-based methods is that you start with an aligned sequence. When you have a distance-based methods, you then score these aligned sequences based on how near they are with one another. And then we also have uh, character-based methods that compare all sequences simultaneously considering one character or site at a time. These are also based on alignment uh, or rather aligned sequences. So you align first and then you um, you use uh, basically uh, compare them a character at a time based on the aligned approach. So basically you still start with an aligned sequence or with a, a set of aligned sequences. So, these alignment-based methods also use probability and consider variation in a set of sequences. So, both approaches consider the tree with the best score three, which requires the smallest number of changes to perform alignment. Now, distance-based method, as I said, they use uh, scoring. They have a dissimilarity or the distance between the two sequences to construct trees. So, they are computationally less intensive than the characters-based methods and are mostly accurate as they take mutations into account. So these are um, a summary of some of the alignment-based methods. So maximum parsimony, maximum likelihood, they are character-based methods. Neighbor, neighbor joining and UPGMA, these are uh, distance-based methods. Now, how about alignment-free methods? So in alignment-free, when it's it means uh, by its name, it does not really rely on aligned sequences. You don't have to rely, rather, you don't have to align the sequences first. And it has recently gained attention, especially in light of um, the developments in machine learning and AI. So examples of this one are the K-tuple based on word frequencies, methods that represent the sequence without using the word frequencies, such as compression algorithm, probabilistic methods, and information theory-based methods. So let's look at K-tuple first. In a K-tuple method, the genetic sequence is represented by a frequency vector of a fixed length of subsequence. So you have a full length sequence. You look, you you find a frequent a vector here. You 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 find a fixed length subsequence. Uh, a, a, it can be a sequence of five, a ten out of one hundred. Uh, a sequence of one hundred um characters, and then find the frequency. How frequent does this particular five five or ten character uh, string occurs in your sequences? So how uh, how often? Do you uh, across all of the sequence you want to uh, compare? How often do you see those uh, set of characters in that particular order or particular sequence? So that's the K-tuple method. In the probabilistic methods, uh, it represents the sequences using the transition matrix of a Markov chain of a pre-specified order, and comparison of two sequences is done by finding the distance between two transition matrices. Whereas you have a graphical representation, it comprises 2D or 3D or even 20 dimensional methods. It provides an easy way to view, sort, and compare various sequences. Graphical representation further helps in recognizing major characteristics among similar biological characteristics. Alignment free methods has been made possible right now because of the intensive or an enhanced computational power of current uh, compu computers. So we can now um, basically uh, do or compute in a much uh, smaller time frame what we cannot do 10 years, 20 years prior. So uh, given that, we let us look at some of the classical methods used for uh, phylogenetic analysis. These are the common sequence analysis methods for phylogenetic analysis in the classical way. You will actually um, encounter most of them when you when you use um, uh, uh, pro programs like Plastal or Massel or Mega softwares. So you will then um, 
choose whether you want to do distance analysis, parsimony, UPGMA, neighbor joining, is it a maximum likelihood or Bayesian approach, uh, depending on the software. But you will encounter these terms, so we will be discussing them. So what is a distance analysis? So distance analysis, as Nate suggests, you compare the two aligned sequences at a time, and um, basically how dissimilar, how similar or not similar they are with one another. So you build a matrix of all possible sequence pair. And during each comparison, the number of changes or base substitutions, such base substitutions or indels events are counted and presented as a proportion of the overall sequence length. So these final estimates of the difference between all possible pairs of sequences are known as pairwise distance. For example, you have four sequences here. These sequences are already aligned. Now, in distance analysis, you look at first, of course, the first uh, characters in all of the sequences. How similar are they to one another? For example, one versus two, one versus three, one versus four. So how similar are they? So for example, one in the first character, uh, sequence A is similar to sequence, or rather uh, in this uh, alignment, rather, you have sequence A and sequence uh, versus sequence two. They're very similar, save for just one character difference. So you have now a proportion matrix, a matrix showing the proportion one versus two. We have only one difference here versus 10. So 1 over 10, that's 0 0.1. In 1 versus 3, you have, what well, verse is different? This 1, 2, uh, 3, and 4. So 4 positions divided by a total of 10. Total positions. And then 1 versus 4, do the same. Then do the same with 2 versus 3. 2 versus 4 and 3 versus 4. So you now have this one. And in building your tree, based on the, the differences in the distance, you first, of course, get the one with the lowest score. This is 1 and 2. And then get the one next closest score, that is 1 and 3. And then finally, 1 and 4. So that is your how you actually... um. Uh, build your tree using distance analysis. This is by uh, the unweighted pair group method, the UPGMA. So in here, the pairwise distances are based on the calculation. So you join species to get species or the genes together according to their increasing differences. And you can use various coefficients to measure how well the branch lengths of the tree reflect. So we can actually apply the model here on the neutral theory of evolution in order to generate an appropriate uh, distance between the sequences. So another method for creating a tree is the parsimony. In parsimony, the goal is to identify that phylogeny requires uh, the phylogeny that requires the fewest necessary changes to explain the differences among observed sequences. So for example, again, you have this same sequence. And uh, in here, you are going to look at them character by character. So for example, uh, you start with species uh, spe uh, with sequence one. And uh, you have this uh, sets of characters for this position one in your sequences. So you can have you can go about it in uh, two possible ways. So uh, the, based on a pass uh, on the on the supposition that a mutation changes the sequences. For example, uh, from an ancestral, uh, let's say you will designate one um, sequence as the ancestral one. Uh, hypothetical ancestral one. So just so you have uh, uh, a rely an anchor for this um, tree. Now you you start with one, and then since they are the same the in that in this position, they is the same with sequence number two. So one and one, and then there's a one uh, there's a single change from uh, sequence uh, species or sequence one and two to sequence three and four. So this is a single uh, total of one ch one change. Uh, another possi possibility is that you start with, again, your anchor, which is uh, sequence one. And then in order to get to sp sequence three, you have you introduce a mutation. That is a change from A to G. And then uh, no, no change to sequence three because they're the same. And then you, you have another mutation to, to change back to sequence number two. So you have a total of two changes or two mutations, two hypothetical mutations. You do that... Um, with all of the species 
and all of the positions and all of the characters. And then you add them. How many? What is the least amount of uh, mutations that you find? So in here, this is the nine steps. This is the most parsimonious. And therefore, this is the most likely um, phylogenetic tree that you would generate. So the nine steps is because you take into account the total, all of the... Um, all of the characters in the whole sequence. You have a total of 10, uh, 10 characters or a total of 10 um, residues, 10 um, data in your sequence. So you have this one. So that's parsimony. Now, the third one is maximum likelihood. In maximum likelihood, it provides um, probabilities of the sequences given a model of their evolution on a particular tree. So the more probable the sequence given the tree, the more the tree is prepared. So maximum likelihood is just getting what is the probability of getting that particular um, mutations and uh, getting the maximum data. So in here, it is computationally intense because you, you generate all possible trees and then uh, pick one from them that is the most um, probable. You basically have the, okay, that's why it's called maximum likelihood. So the user can choose a model of evolution. This method can be useful for wildly divergent groups or other difficult situations. But again, this is computationally intensive. So it's similar to um, flipping a coin, basically. But again, you can, in flipping a coin, you just get a 50-50 chance changing from heads to tails. But if we are using, for example, uh, nucleotide sequences, you have four possible uh, four possible outcomes, or rather three. Uh, no, uh, if you count no mutations, so you have four possible outcomes. And each particular mutation change from A to T, A to G, A to C, or no change at all, would have its own different value of probability. So that is where the models, uh, these uh, substitution models can be used but again computationally intensive so here is um, an example for that um, computationally intensive uh, process of maximum likelihood so you you generate all possible outcomes how uh, if this changes to it's like uh, similar to parsimony but in parsimony rather than just counting how many changes you also count the probability of getting that particular change so there's an, a, a, not only one change two change but 0.5 point basically uh, the the value of that particular change and then get the the best probability or the maximum value of the probability for that and um, last but not the least, in more of the classical methods that we use for generating trees, we have the Bayesian approach. This is from the Bayes theorem. So also based on maximum likelihood methods, but it incorporates a prior probability. So when we say prior probability, the probability of the hypothesis according to a previous information. Now, having a previous information would be tricky because you need to have a, a previous hypothesis or a previous supposition first in order to, to generate this one. So it uses complex sampling methods like Markov chain and Monte Carlo methods to generate this one. Okay, now all of these methods can be used to generate three, but how do we know if we have a, a good one, a correct three, or a, a, a good enough three to be used as an inference? Okay, do, are we inferring a proper tree? So we have reliability test. So it refers to the probability that members of a clad will be part of a true tree. So the most common to use is bootstrapping them. So you bootstrap, um, I, I will just link um, uh, a, a video on what bootstrapping is to for you to have an idea what it is. But basically, you, you do bootstrapping tests in order to estimate a reliability of the generated tree that you have. Okay, and that is um, one test in uh, in order to um, to do that. So that concludes the lecture on molecular phylogeny and even the overall lecture for bioinformatics part one.